Assalamualaikum and good morning. For today's lab activity, we will look into the differences between local storage versus remote storage in Android application. What is persistent storage? Persistent storage is a place where the user can store their data and keep the data even after the user quits or terminate the mobile application. So by having a local storage, you will permit your user to store their data inside your application. There are many forms of persistent storage, but there are two large categories that encompasses persistent storage. So commonly, you may have local storage and remote storage. So for local storage, the data is stored inside the mobile device only and the data is not being transferred to a remote third-party server. Additionally, local storage can also be encrypted or in clear text in order to ensure that uh, the data can be stored in complete privacy. The developer can implement encryption before the data being stored in the local storage. Next, we have remote storage. So remote storage is the storage of data in remote server where the data from the mobile devices is being transferred to a remote web server or remote database server. This would usually involve a remote API such as Firebase API or RESTful Web API or any other third-party API that permits the user data being stored on the remote server such as cloud storage and other form of storage like MongoDB you can also use uh, Web API to store your user data on uh, MySQL uh, server on the remote or Oracle server on the remote web server. So for uh, this week's activity, we will only uh, concentrate on local storage in Android. According to the Android documentation, there are several ways for the developer to implement uh, local storage in Android application. So there is app specific storage, which means that uh, the developer can permit the user to store files inside the user device where the files are only accessible within the application scope only. So it means that the files that is stored by the application cannot be shared with other application inside the device. And there is also a scheme that is called shared storage. The shared storage scheme will permit the application files to be shared among other applications inside the user device. So it is intent for the application to share the application uh, the files with other applications including media, documents and other files. And then there is also shared preferences where uh, this API would allow the data to be stored inside the mobile application. The type of data that is being stored here are primitive uh, data. Usually, it is stored in a key value pair like JSON data or like uh, MongoDB data. We use a key and then value like a hash to store it inside the settings or inside the preference area in the Android device. Okay, lastly, we have database. Android uh, framework or Android device SDK permits users to store the data inside a local database. So all uh, mobile application developers have access to SQLite API to store their data inside SQLite database. So SQLite database allow the developer to store structured data in a private database using the Room Persistent Library. So for the next lab activity, there is a local storage. We will concentrate on the implementation of preference, that is a key value pair storage and database storage via Room Persistent Library as suggested by the Android documentation. So in preference, uh, usually it is suitable for storing simple data such as high score, counter, date of birth or user preferences such as settings. You can also store the user brightness, okay, the brightness of the user interface, the type of the user interface. So next, we will look into database storage via Room Persistent Library where the Android uh, will store the data in the SQLite database. The advantage of using the database storage via Room Persistent Library is that uh, it provides the high-level API for the user to use easily to store data inside the SQLite uh, database. And then the advantage of having database because 
you have the convenience of having a relational database functionality. So if you learn uh, during the database class, sometimes it is useful to have a relational database where you can uh, structure your data into relationship, one to many, and then you can have many table. And then it can be also be used to store time series data. So what will you want to learn first? You are given the opportunity to choose your next lab activity. Either you want to choose shared preferences or you want to proceed to learn about implementing database in your mobile application. You can choose.